Freshman year of college, first year, as we say, at the University of Virginia, I remember one of my profs asking why we wanted to be here, and I simply said that I wanted to make the world suck less. So Alexis and I met in college. We were hallmates first year. He lived right across the hall from me. He was disappointed because he thought I was a girl. I was like, oh, Alexis and Mike live across the hall. It must be like a co-ed dorm, that's cool. <laughs> he got over that though, which was good. And <laughs> we bonded over video games. Most of our friendship in college was centered around video games, really. Every gamer wishes to be a game developer. That's, that goes hand in hand with just being a gamer. But it didn't quite turn out that way. I had a lot of ideas at the time, just, just like I do now. It's like little frustrations in life. It's, it's, you, you think to yourself, oh, I could do better. I can make this better. And one of the ideas I had was for ordering food from your cell phone. He'd be at Sheets, which is this regional gas station that has touch screens inside. So when you order your sub, you don't have to actually talk to a human. You just touch the screen, as the name would imply. And as an engineer, Steve loved this. He was bummed, though, because he couldn't place the order from his phone. I used to sit there while I pumped gas, thinking, this is a total waste of time, because I'm just standing here. The sub guy inside, he's just standing there. If only there was a way for me to communicate to him, like, he could be making my sub right now. I had told Alexis this idea once. He's like, we should totally build that. I went and found a local lawyer in Charlottesville. We got a company incorporated in Virginia. We called it Red Brick Solutions, because everything in Charlottesville is made out of brick. Spring of our senior year, Paul Grant was giving a talk at Harvard. Steve is like, it'd be cool if we went. I had never heard of Paul Graham. And I was just like, during our senior year spring break, awesome. We were the only kids in Virginia who were going north to Boston during our senior year spring break. The talk was called How to Start a Startup. It was such a fateful talk. Here we were, two undergrads, planning to start a startup. And so the timing couldn't have been better. I had Paul's book about programming in Lisp. I wanted him to sign it. And Alexis actually got Paul's attention, started chatting him up, basically so I could get him to sign my book. And then I said, Dr. Graham, it would totally be worth the cost of buying you a drink to get your opinion on our startup. We've come all the way from Virginia. And at that point, I think he cut me off and he was just like, you came all the way from Virginia? Then he was like, oh, all right, why not? Let's meet at Cafe Algiers. The notion that Paul would go get dinner with two random guys is comical now because he's just mobbed by people like just like us then. Paul sits down and he says, okay, let me hear your pitch. I'm like, all right. And so I just pitched him. And he interrupted before I could get too far into it and was like, this is awesome. He was like, this is, this is going to be the end of lines. Um, and at the time, I remember just thinking, well, why don't we just start with sheets? <laughs> he went off for like 30 minutes before we even got to say anything. And we were thrilled because here is one of Steve's icons who's saying your idea is not terrible. And he gave us some number. He was like, you know, odds for succeeding in a startup are really bad, but you guys have a pretty good shot. And so on the way back to Virginia, we were just thrilled. I emailed Paul to thank him for meeting with us. Paul responded basically saying, I just started this investment company called Y Combinator. You guys should apply. We go up there. We do what we thought was a pretty good pitch. That night, we get a phone call, and it's Paul. And he says, listen, I'm really sorry, but we're going to have to reject you. I was like, Paul, what the shit? You knew what the idea was. We spent two hours talking about it with you. You told us to apply to YC. Like, what the hell? I remember thinking, you know what? We're gonna show them how wrong they were, and, and this is fine. This is good. This is just motivation. We went out that night and got really drunk, and the next morning we were hungover and on a really slow train all the way back to Charlottesville. My cell phone rings, and it's Paul. I'm typing on my keyboard while we're talking so Steve can kind of see what's going on in the conversation. And Paul's basically saying, listen, we, we don't like your idea, but we like you guys. So if you're willing to come back, get right off this train and come up with something new, you know, we'll fund you. Steve like lunged over me to go find the conductor to find out where we were. I told Paul we were somewhere in Connecticut and yeah, we'd get off the train and we'd come right back. Forget the fact that I'd spent the last year researching restaurants in Charlottesville to try to figure out if this product was gonna work. We were starting from scratch on some new thing, and he just said, listen, don't do mobile phones. At that time, there was no app store. You'd have to go through carriers. It was like, just build a web app. It seemed like the internet was going to need a new front page, a broader one, because content was being created, even back in 2005, by such a broad array of sources that you know, no one source could really lay claim to that unless it aggregated everything. We were basically gonna take the mechanisms of delicious. The most popular things are the things that lots of people are submitting, and combine that with Slashdot, which actually had good content. Paul crystallized that phrase during the discussion. He was like, that's it. You guys need to build the front page of the web. 
We moved in early June and just worked. All day, many nights. Y Combinator had given us $12,000. That was our funding. We were super productive. We didn't even go outside. The only experiences we really had outdoors were in Azeroth, the fictional world of Warcraft. We were the first Y Combinator company to launch because Paul sent us this scathing email and Steve took it really, really personally. I'd been working on this literally two weeks and Paul was freaking out over email about why we haven't launched this thing yet. Paul essentially said, you guys haven't launched it because you're incompetent, in which case you're hosed, or you're just worried about it being perfect, in which case you're still hosed because you're gonna have to launch it anyway and just deal with the fact that it won't be perfect. I sent him this email about three weeks in basically saying, okay, the basics of it are working. And then he wrote his next essay and linked to Reddit from that essay. And that got us a thousand or so visitors that first day. We hadn't planned on launching. The site was really, really bad. But from that day forward, we were launched. We were able to build a product that was at least functional. It may have been bare bones, but it worked. And Alexis and I started submitting all the content just to keep the thing full, right? Because Reddit's no fun if the page is blank. We would come up with a post and a random username to give the impression that the site had more people on it. The day I woke up and Reddit was working on its own, it was just the most incredible feeling. It was like, holy shit, we've got this thing that is like really making a difference in people's lives. We are here in Reddit's headquarters, Inner Sanctum, in Soma, San Francisco. When Reddit launched, I just fell in love and got to know the people working there, and then four or five years later, uh, I'm, I'm here. Reddit has the entrepreneurial spirit and the fast-paced decision-making that definitely is part of being a startup. When people go online, they go on Reddit and then go elsewhere from there. It is really their entry point into the rest of the internet. My generation uh, is going to be characterized by communities extending beyond the physical realm. Reddit is the forefront of it, and it's kind of like sharing dreams, because we all look at the same things, we all experience the same websites and stories. When Reddit first started, people posted links and voted on them. There was no categories, there was no comments, and it evolved as people started creating subreddits, people started making things like Rage Comics. Everything on Reddit is curated by up and down votes from users. So all of these novel, amazing things have come from our community. The ripple effects of social media are that you start to see people's lives get changed. Whether it's just like saving them from a boring day at work or creating this political rally in DC. Kids get transplants and bus monitors in New York get hundreds of thousands of dollars in anonymous donations from all over the world. That really starts changing lives. I'd always kind of thought of my life as kind of a video game where if you have zero lives left in a game, that was your last life. Uh, and you would always play a little harder because you knew like there was no going back after this. A month into Reddit, this was like a week after we had launched, um, I got a phone call from the mother of my girlfriend saying that she had fallen out of a window uh, like six stories. She ended up surviving. She was in a coma for months. And, and two months after that, um, I got a phone call from my dad who said that my mom was in the hospital. It was a uh, type four glioblastoma, which is a really ugly word for a really ugly tumor. Um, and it was terminal. And that pretty much colored my entire Reddit experience. Even on my worst mornings, I would wake up and I would remember that, you know, I didn't have to go through what she was going through. I didn't have to go through what my dad was going through and taking care of her. They have imbued me with a sense of appreciation for the one life that I have remaining. I am trying to make the most out of this one life I have left. Reddit was not created to do good works. The community does not do good works uh, because they know that's what my mom would have wanted. But I can't help but be really, really pleased with how much good Reddit has done for the world um, because it gives me hope for, it gives me hope for humans. I feel like that was in many ways the intent of her life, 
That's why I've never left Reddit. That's why every time I give a talk and I meet someone, uh, and I meet someone who thanks me for Reddit because he or she feels like they finally have a voice, I feel like I'm hearing my mom say it. Reddit is one of those communities that really is shocking to me because it, it's so big but still has its heart in the right place and, and generally wants to make the world a better place. And it's really, it's really neat to have been a, to been a part of that. There's so many forces that are trying to scare us, uh, that try to divide us, that try to convince us that people are not just people, um, that if Reddit can be a way to help us all realize that you know, most of us are actually pretty decent people um, looking out for one another, and that a bunch of normal, normal people um, can actually do really, really big stuff. They don't need a stage, they don't need a political office, they don't need a TV channel, you know, they just need an internet connection. That's really, really great.